All right, so um, the last search that we did is more in line with what people will be searching for. But this still isn't the most modern way. Notice as I'm searching, perhaps the search engine itself is giving me suggestions. And perhaps you, maybe throughout your years of using the web, have gotten more savvier to be more specific. So what if now we do a search on both the search engines that's a little more specific. I never specified San Diego, but it seemed to be smart enough to pick up I'm in San Diego. Now, not to scare you, but every time you're on a website, when you're browsing, your web browser is actually transmitting a lot of information that you may not know about, such as your general location. So I didn't specify San Diego, but it's giving me San Diego results. So let's say I'm going to be more specific. Let's say I am a restaurant and I need a website. So what would appeal more to me would be searching for such as web design for a restaurant in San Diego. That is a perfectly good search term and many people are going to search this way. They're going to be more specific. Again, if you get suggested, you can ignore them for the moment, but I'm going to go this way. Whatever your topic is, maybe be a little more specific if you can think of a more specificity. So I'm saying web design for a restaurant in San Diego. I'm going to search that in Google and I'm going to search it in Bing. Both of them a little more specific. Google says three and a half million results. Bing says 17 and a half million results. Google number one is Techlius again. GetBento.com is next. They've got restaurant web design whereas Techlius doesn't say anything about restaurant specific stuff. These guys are goldenseller.com. Uh, they don't seem to mention restaurants either. And then we've got Educational Institute, top 50 web designers in San Diego, web design portfolio, afterdarkgraphics.com. Okay, After Dark Graphics seems to be a real result of a real company. And on one of their screens, their portfolio, they show that they've worked with restaurants. So that's becoming a legitimate answer right there. A7D.design. Um, you may be noticing there's not there's no longer simply .com, .net, .biz. There's a whole new world, literally hundreds of new extensions now. .com, .biz, and all of that. There's a .design. There's a .xyz. There's a dot guru, there's a dot ninja, there's all of these weird new ones that you can get. If you never were able to get victorswebdesigns.com, would you settle for victorswebdesign.ninja? You know, it may or may not be bad. It's a nice, memorable name, but the problem with all of these new generation of names is everyone thinks it's just dot com. Mm -hmm. Things will change because the dot coms are running out. There's a whole new land grab out there for dot arrow dot biz.ninja.guru.xyz and again the name doesn't quite matter it's your content but I just noticed th these guys one of the top <coughs> results is dot .design a7d design I don't know what a7d is out of context but I know here now they're a San Diego graphic design and branding agency they do mention restaurant in this description we'll see that we're able to edit all of this stuff and its value Yelp results. Again, these review sites are starting to appear more and more as a way for me to weed out the stuff that I don't care about. Let me read other people's opinions. Opinions in the real world, you know, were word of mouth. And now in the digital world, it's Yelp, it's, it's Facebook Local, it's a Google Plus Review, it's, it's an Angie's List Review. Let's see, Bing. Number one result is teach yourself web design. And we've got Weebly. They're another big one. There's Wix, Weebly, Dreamweaver, WordPress, etc. TaylorPond.com. SEO expert. Results on a map. Again, um, the results are different for each one, but here Google says, okay, I mean Bing says, you're probably probably looking for a San Diego-based web design company because you're a San Diego-based restaurant. Here are some results. There's AD, A7D again with their Yelp reviews. Pretty good reviews. Cafe on the Park, which is completely irrelevant, but it showed up here. It's a restaurant itself. 
Yelp results, webdesignsolutions.com. Well, they, they probably got that name a while ago. They're holding on to it. And through various aspects, then they've managed to still keep it and optimize. Media they went restaurant. So they've got the keyword restaurant again. Gas Lab Media, San Diego Web Design Company, specializing in restaurants. Again, I'm getting millions of results, but I'm getting more specific and hopefully finding um, the best result. So, old method, simple keywords about your about the topic of your site. New method, detailed keywords about the topic of your site. Let me further say, simple keywords about the topic of your site on your home page. New method, anywhere on your site. Oops. We're going to talk about both of these, of course, but the new method is better because the search engines evolve and they have to combat the spammers, whereas the old days the spammers would put in so many keywords all over their home page to hopefully trick someone into finding them and clicking. Well, that was, that was negative to just put a variety of keywords um, that didn't matter. What the spammers at one point also did, they figured out this trick. What if we wrote some text on our website and we've got a white background? So we'll, we will change the color of our text to be white. White text on a white background becomes invisible. So the spammers would write a thousand keywords on their website, all hidden in white. And the search engines would see them. The people wouldn't see them, because white on white, I can't see that. But the search engines would see that and say, oh, this site must be really good because it's got these keywords. But that was a spam technique. It was abused. The search engines got smarter, and now that's a bad technique. We have the concept of black hat SEO and the concept of white hat SEO. Black hat. Bad techniques to help you rank. White hat. Good techniques. to type and talk. Techniques to help you rank. And this comes from the classic cowboy movies. When the uh, bad guys came into town, shot up the place, and took over, what kind of color hat were they wearing? Black, black, black hat. hat. And when the sheriff cleaned up the town and rode them out on a rail, what hat was, color hat was he wearing? White hat. Okay. Now, because it's digital, um, yes, we do have a gray hat, actually. Techniques which may not be bad just yet. These are techniques that the search engine itself, we will see. Here's all the things we recommend. And there may be a technique that works, and it's going to work for us legitimate businesses, and then the illegitimate businesses figure out a way to abuse it. So then now the search engines don't recommend that method anymore, but they can't overnight say, don't do that anymore. So then there's these techniques that are not so good anymore that you should go away from, because eventually, most likely, they will become black hat, such as keyword stuffing, which is, you know, using your keyword all over your site. Um, one keyword all over your site. I'm a web design company, so I'm going to have web design in my web address, and my title, and my logo, and my footer, and my about page, and my paragraph, and every other sentence. I'm going to use keyword web design over and over. That's keyword stuffing. And in the old days, that was good. That's how you showed Yahoo you were a website about web design. But then the, the spammer said, OK, we'll do that too. And we'll put 10 different variations of that keyword all over our site. And now it's black hat, because it's just abuse. And we'll be able to see all of these do's and don'ts directly from the search engines. So the search that I did here, my site still didn't show up, uh, even though I got more specific. And that's okay, that's what I'm saying, you have a lot of competition. But this type of keyword search, which we will define what that is soon, is the modern way where we're more specific. 
And as I said, it doesn't have to be, these keywords don't have to be right on your home page. They can be in a portfolio page, in an about page, in some sub page, not just on your home page. It's basically the content, any content anywhere throughout your site. Because the search engine can analyze every single thing about your website in like one second, literally. The Google computers, the Bing computers can analyze everything on your site in seconds, if not milliseconds, and help you get ranked. Let's see this example up here. Um, authentic Italian food in Chula Vista. So I see a cool little map, I see results, and I'm not going to look at those. Those may be paid. I'll get back to those in a moment. Best Italian food? Well, it's a Yelp result. Number one result here, some company Italianissimo Trattoria. Number one, number three result, the actual website. This is one of our clients, actually. So if you're searching that particular keyword, our client appears number one in this cool little map area. It appears number one via Yelp reviews, and then their main website appears number one. And their competitor down the street is right here. So I'm showing this a real-world example of one of our clients that being specific, you know, people, you can get Italian food everywhere. You want Italian that's authentic. They want it in this location. So people are specific. These here are not ads. These here are free listings that you can set up on Google. These are Google Plus or Google Business listings. In Google, you may get a map screen. You can set this up for free by Google. Now, it's kind of got two names at the moment. Both of them are correct, but it's either going to be Google Local or Google Plus. I think now they're even calling it Google My Business. They're trying to decide on a good name for it. I still simply call it Google Plus. But Google Plus is Google's social network, where friends and family can connect and share funny cat pictures and all of that. But also businesses can create a listing to help them get found for free. So these results that are appearing on that Google search are coming from there. And where people can give a review, people can give an opinion, a star rank ranking, you can see the hours of operation, all of that stuff. You can get that, you can set that up for free. Some people will see this and think that's an ad, they paid for it, I'm gonna skip it. Okay. Then they're going to look over here. Yelp, I don't know, those ads are, those reviews are fake. They probably paid for those. Okay, skip that. Non paid, non review website is number one. So if they discount every one of those other legitimate ones, there's the first result of a real Italian food restaurant is still this client. Number two, then, is the guys down the street. Then there's TripAdvisor and another TripAdvisor. They're on TripAdvisor too with very good ratings. They're on the three best Italian restaurants blog. They got ranked by some website that says one of the, of the three, here's one of the good ones, our client. Here's another one that's saying 15 of the best pastas in Chula Vista, there's our client in there too. So it's not just the website. If you did this review and you see, hey, Italianissimo is getting a lot of links and a lot of hits, and Mangia is only getting one, and I'm seeing all these great ratings for Italianissimo, what are people going to choose? Hopefully our client. It's still up to the user. They may still discount all of that and go with these guys over here for whatever reason. At least I can kind of pronounce them. So let's see the result over on Bing. Just to compare and contrast. Number one result, easycater.com. Number two, DiGiorno.com. Ads, and there's a map, there's a client again. This one is coming directly from Yelp. Google is using their own system that they invented. Bing is borrowing Yelp. 
and the number one result here on a nice looking map is Yelp. Again, I can go create a free Yelp review. Okay, skip that. I'm going to say that's paid. No, another result here, number one, nice big and bold, the name of the business, but it's on Yelp. Number two is the website itself, and then the competitor. This is still a win. So think about this, that you don't have to be getting your main homepage website as number one. If you've got your Twitter as number one, if you've got your Yelp as number one, if you've got your Facebook as number one, that's still a win. Because hopefully, on your Twitter, you still have a link back to your homepage. On your Facebook, you've got a link back to your homepage. You can still direct traffic from whatever they went to back to your homepage. So that's still a win. That's a big win. That's number one position. And yes, some people are going to say, these reviews are fake. 344 fake reviews? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I could think maybe half a dozen, maybe a dozen. 50 fake reviews? Hmm. 100? 300 fake reviews? Even if half of those reviews are fake, 150 people are saying this is good. Even if a quarter, 50 people are saying this is good. There's a sub page of the restaurant taking up another valuable slot showing the client. There's the yellow pages. The yellow pages are still around. Now it's digital. The yellow web pages. So they've got that client up there too. I'm not sure why there's two listings of Yelp, but here's another four and a half, four stars out of five to show that off. There's the Facebook results and ads. So um, this is the more modern way to search, and we will define it as. Well, before that, in Google you may set up a map. In Bing, the map comes from a Yelp profile. So again, go claim your Yelp profile if it exists, or create one to get your best foot forward. A detailed keyword search is the long tail keyword strategy. In other words, more specific search. <coughs> the more specific search, um, let's see if this works here. The more the more specific search um, is what more and more of us are doing because have any of you um, done this? What's a good Italian food restaurant nearby? Here are 10 Italian restaurants near you that have good reviews. OK, I get a map. It knows where I am, because these things know where we are. Then the number one result, <laughs> interesting. Then number two, Viva Pomodoro. It's got four and a half stars. And we've got Gaetano's Pizza. That's uh, four and a half stars, 189 reviews. Andiamo Restaurant, 154 reviews. Old Trieste Restaurant, 44 reviews. So this, I talked to it and it gave me a result. That's the same thing that I did right here. I was much more specific. More and more of us have these little computers in our pockets. We can ask it a question. This is, a, this is an Android, so um, I, I asked, uh, I've got my app here, Cortana, to ask it questions. You might have your uh, iPhone with Siri. You ask Siri. You might use Google. Google Now or whatever it's called, you ask your phone something in a natural language search. Let me turn this down before my notifications annoy us. And so the long tail keyword search, aka natural language search. The web websites have been around 27 years, the, the, the specification and the invention of websites basically is from 1989. So 27 years of websites. The internet has been around longer. The internet technically are all the computers connected in the world. Websites are the web, the web, the World Wide Web are websites that we visit with a web browser. Websites have been around 27 years. 
and in 27 years, some of us that have been using the web longer, we know we get better results when we're more specific. You may have learned this very recently, you may have known it a while, these things evolve. So natural language search, I'm just going to talk to it. I'm going to ask it a regular question like I would ask a person, and these things are getting smarter. And so Bing doesn't have it yet, but Google does. Search by voice. What's a good Italian food restaurant nearby? Listings for Italian so food restaurants. Here Italian they are. Foods. 152 reviews. They're over there on Harbor View, Waterfront. Not exactly nearby, but good results. And so forth. So natural language keyword search. Specific detailed keywords. So we have to think about in detailed keywords, and as I said up here, anywhere on your site. Um, you're not going to cram all of these possibilities of keywords on your home page. Now you're abusing. Now that's black hat. If you're putting all these variations and all of these possible search terms on your site just on the home page, that's, that's spamming. That's black hat. So you want to put a variety of different possibilities that people might search for. You want to think in terms of what are people searching for. So did I say that already? Think in terms of what people are looking for. Can you incorporate those keywords legitimately on your site? Not only on your home page, but on sub pages. For example, the blog. Okay, this assumes you have a blog. Let's back up. What's a blog? A blog is a website where you write articles, where you write uh, you know little news blurbs or longer form articles, you know, uh, news items and such. A blog. A blog that is up to date, a blog that has topics of what people might search for. Because uh, you're not going to fit in all of these concepts on your home page, you shouldn't try. But I'm going to write an article about, on this Italian food website perhaps, you know, uh, vegan alternatives to, uh, to lasagna, or you know, vegan, vegan, uh, uh, vegan lasagna recipes. I could write an article on that Italian food restaurant about vegan lasagna. Someone might search for that. Vegan lasagna recipes. The client shows up, maybe one, two, three, whatever, and they see it. Oh, okay, here's they've got a recipes on it to, to do it myself, but that picture looks really good and they're open right now and they deliver. Maybe I'll call them. You don't know what results you'll get, but if you try these various tactics, writing articles, and again, we don't have a lot of time to talk about it in this class, guess what? I'm teaching a blogging class this Friday, 9.30 a.m in this room. And so we talk about you should be blogging. That's another aspect that will help you create content to help you get found. This is what people are searching for. So people might search for something. Now it might be a bit passe at the moment, but earlier at the beginning of the year a hot new social network was invented and unleashed upon the world. We've got, you know, Facebook and Twitter and all of that. So one new social network came out at the beginning of the year. Uh, you may have heard of it. It's called Peach. Maybe you never heard of it. But I would like to know about it because maybe it's going to be the next hot thing. So I would search for uh, how to use Peach like a pro. Number one result is a video. Number two result is an article from our company. And everyone else is writing, how to use speech? How to use speech? All of these people are saying how to use this network or the game, I guess, the game character. Uh, but the top two results, one is our video and one is our article about it. How to use speech for a business. 
how to use the hot new peach app. So this is over at businessinsider.com, Huffington Post. Um, there's ours right there. Right along the Huffington Post, we're side by side on the front page. Now, are people going to go this far down or think the first result is the best? Some people will. Some people will want to see a bunch of results. Maybe depending upon how we worded it, I want to be a pro. Click that one. What is Peach and how I use it? I want that one. How to use Peach, your new social media obsession? Okay, that stands out. I'll click that. You have to write content in terms of uh, how people might click. This, of course, is a hard thing to teach because every company is trying to do something online and therefore I cannot give a lecture that will uh, apply to everyone but I can say again in terms keywords what are people searching for you have to think about your target audience and demographic and we'll have some activities on that you have to figure out who do you want to find your business who is currently finding your business how can I find more of those customers and how can I create content to reach those customers On Bing, our result didn't rank with that particular search. Our video does. If we do it this way, there's our YouTube video, there's our article, and then there's how to peel and slice a peach. So, um, So techniques come and go, but the technique now, en vogue, and should be for a long time, the best technique for modern SEO, <coughs> good content. Yes? Who decides what's black hat and white hat? The search engines. The search engines where people are searching for are making the rules, so we need to know the rules and follow the rules to rank well. Um, we will see when we set up our webmaster tools, we'll, we'll see all of that. But it's the search engines that decide it. So the best technique then is, okay, there, we might think about keywords and we might think about descriptions and addresses and all of those like ancillary things. But it still comes back to content. Why is the search engine going to show you number one on a search result? Why are they going to think that you should be visible when someone searches? It's your content. It's always your content. It's not any of these special tricks which may give you a little bump, but in the long term, that article there we wrote in January, it's still popping up highly, even though we're halfway through the year. So when I showed this result, and we've got Business Insider, Huffington Post, PC Advisor, these are huge websites that have had a long presence. Ouyas.com, I haven't heard of that one, but they ranked well. And then we're right there, number let's see, three, four, five, six. We're number six on that search term out of 21 million results. These big sites ranking above it because we have to get into these topics over here, as I say. <coughs> You may rank well, you may not. It depends on the competition and many factors. But here's a few things to, to start to think about. The three pillars of SEO. Longevity, authority, content. Longevity. How long has your online presence existed? The search engines give you some bump, some boost, some good results, the longer your content exists online. If me and my competitor, both our both are bakeries, Google and Bing have to decide some way to rank us better. Well, she started her business one year before me. That could be a, a factor to rank her higher. Because in the real world also, Businesses that have been around longer, they're more stable, they're more, they could possibly be more valuable to you. 
Are you going to go with, you know, a, a lawyer who has just been a lawyer for two years, or are you going to go for th with a lawyer that's been a lawyer for 20 years? One with two years experience, one with five years experience. Probably the one with longer experience. Same thing on websites. The longer a website exists, the better. Because any spammer can create a website today. Ten websites yesterday, but you created your website a year ago, and your competitor created it three months later, or your competitor created their website five years before you. That is one of the factors that will help them rank higher. But obviously that's not the only factor because there are some websites that have existed for a while that are not number one. Because then we get into these two, authority and content. Let me answer content first because then it goes back to authority. Content, the stuff you create to help your authority. It's a bit of a circular definition, so then we go back to authority. Why should you be ranked well? Because of your content. Okay, you and your competitor both created a website a year ago. The search engine then needs to decide which one to rank better. Well, you decided to write a, a short article once a week. You write, you know, a 100-word article just to pick some random numbers. You wrote a 100-word article once a week for a couple of months, and your competitor didn't. Your competitor just has a really nice-looking website. Their website looks better than yours. But yours has more content. Yours has blog posts, articles that are full of these keywords that people are searching for. You've got an article there, so I'm this bakery. Pecan pie recipe. We've got healthy alternatives to sugar. We've got um, our review on the Betty Crocker spatula 9000. You know, some sort of articles where people can have value, find value to them. People can search. I'm trying to sell baked goods. I'm trying to sell cookies and cupcakes, yes. But I have to do many things to convince people of that, just like in the real world. I've got an amazing business on Main Street. No one's coming in. I have to convince people. So, in the digital world, I perhaps I'm writing articles, I'm writing blog posts, people are searching for these things, people are seeing my well-written articles, people are sharing them on their Facebook and such. Google and Bing are seeing all of these things. People are seeing the traffic you're getting from people searching your articles, sharing your articles. And they're seeing that your competitor is not getting any of that. That is helping your authority then. If both of you have the same longevity, and you're creating more content, that's helping your authority, and that's how you're going to rank higher, potentially. Again, I cannot say any guarantees in any of this business. I have to say potentially and possibly and probably in all of those keywords. Yes? So I just pulled up our main competitor's website. He is, he's going to have to website. Huh. Um, but he's not blogging. He's not... Um, doing really anything different, same keywords, but he's posting a bunch of videos, and he's using corporate logos from like round table pizza, things like that. Is that why he's coming in on page one and we're coming on page two? How often does it seem that those videos are being created or uploaded? Not very often, but they look pretty static and they've been around for a while. But do, you, but do you have any videos yourself? Not yet, we're working on it. That might be possibly also why they're ranking higher because they're creating content that you don't have. Maybe both of you uh, have very similar things, but one thing that they have that you don't is that video. And now people are really liking videos a lot to see some results. Instead of reading perhaps a boring article, they see a nice video about it. So I would recommend and think about can we put any videos? They don't have to be any sort of professional kind of videos, just any video content about your company that shows it positively and such with keywords and all of that. That could start to help you rank a little higher because page two is not so bad right now. Obviously you want to be number one and at some point you were probably page 20 but uh, you're climbing perhaps and video will help you get higher. So here I said the stuff. I was mentioning blogs but yes Tweets. Are you active on Twitter? That's stuff. That's content. Are you? Do you have a Yelp profile? That's content. Are you making videos? In the social media class that starts this 
um, Wednesday. Uh, we don't have time to talk about creating videos, but we do talk about setting up a YouTube account, examples of effective videos, how to set up the YouTube account to get views and all of that. If the class were four weeks long, it's three weeks long, if that social media class, whenever it comes back again, if it's four weeks long, we spend two days on YouTube, which is one day where we spend time about creating videos, because you can't do much on YouTube without a video, but because it's a three-week class, we're going to spend not a day on creating the videos, I'll provide you a video and all the tips and techniques to use YouTube effectively. Because that's more stuff. You saw that that when I searched for Peach, the number one result both times was a video. And a video can be complex or simple, it can be polished or amateur, but it's just more content for people to find, more content to help build your authority, to negate your longevity, which might not be too long, to help you then get ranked. Yes? Is it more you have to do with just creating content? Say you have a page and um, you just are creating many, many subpages for really no reason, they're not necessary. By having those many, many subpages, does that count as some type of authority? No, good point. Uh, authority and content all relate to um, relevant content, which means uh, you can have many subpages, sure, but how do they help you overall about your business? What more do they say about your business? What's, what is this content that people want to see and read and share? So if I'm a bakery, I'm going to be writing and creating content all about food and cooking and baking and health and that sort of thing. I'm not going to be writing articles about, you know, how to use peach. Uh, what's the best shoe for running? You know, I'm going to create content related to the concept of my website or business, relevant content, and not just create content for the sake of creating content. It's relevant content. The search engines look at all of that and understand that, and then ask, why is this website full of 100 pages, which is not bad, but why are 90 of them unrelated to the main business? And then they'll rank you like a spammer, because that's what spammers do. They create a website full of a bunch of stuff to trick people into clicking. I may only have seven pages on my site, but all of them are related to the same concept. That's going to be better than my competitor having 17 pages, but a lot of them are off-topic. What if they're very similar? So if they're just kind of pages, maybe 10 pages, and they're about almost not quite copy and paste, but they're very similar to each other on very similar topics, almost repeated. Um, page presence in a way. That's not so good. I would say relevant content uh, and I would say original, non-repetitive content. Repetitive content. I don't have spell check on this content. So uh, non-repetitive content. If uh, you know you kind of reuse the same articles and such more than once and change them a little bit, that's not so helpful. You might say, well, I heard if I change it 10 percent, that's still 90 percent same content, and the search engines can understand and analyze that and they see this website has this article that's 90% the same as these seven other websites and these seven other websites are spam websites so this must also be a spam website even on your own website if it's all your own original content but it's kind of repetitive over and over what what is there new to offer your your potential customers question so it's a lot of nuances here and we'll get into details, but it's original, non-repetitive, relevant, help building your authority. The longer you do it, the better. Content can be video, text, PowerPoint presentations. It's it's all content. Is there a way for you to know if you're getting downgraded by search engines? Basically, like, you're, they're flagging you for things, they're spamming you? Yes, when we set up the webmaster tools, we can get notifications of problems of our website. We can even see the um, the links from other websites because that's a big topic we'll get to which is backlinks um, so yeah we can see all of that once we set up the tools that'll be next week so modern SEO unfortunately is very strict Uh, some uh, some things to think about. Guilty until proven innocent. 
guilt by association. Shoot first, ask questions later. And we want if it uh, has enough of locks like the duck and quacks. Like a duck, it's a spam duck. <laughs> So what this is, we will see, guilt by association means that if your website has a lot of links coming to it from spam websites, the search engine will say, well, all of these spam websites are linking together, they're all spam. I believe you that your website is not spam, but the search engines won't, because there's so many bad websites out there, so many spam websites, it's much easier for them to mark all of these as spam and move on, and then for you to prove you're not a spammer. And so... If you do techniques that are like a spammer, you'll be labeled like a spammer. If you are linked to by many spam websites, you will be treated as a spammer. You're, you're going to shoot first, ask questions later. It's easier for them, more cost effective. And so if you do techniques that make you seem like a spam duck, you're a spam duck. And we will be able to see what, what, are, our, what are our associations. We'll be able to see these seven websites linked to us because that's related to authority if I've got seven websites linking to me, that seems pretty good. Another website thought my website was so good they linked to it. But the double-edged sword there is spam websites could link to your website for various spam reasons, and that'll cause you to be labeled as a spammer. And we can do something about it. We can see who they are, the good and the bad, and do things about them. Question? That would be like listings, like um, certain certain listing directories or whatever with that if they're not well known would they that's a possibility but listings uh, listing sites really kind of are out of favor nowadays in the old days when there weren't that many websites and when Yahoo was more popular we wanted to get on these listing websites these sort of like directories of like-minded websites they're not as useful as much anymore unscientific poll. How many of you use directory websites to find more websites? Listings of websites. No one seems to be raising their hand. Obviously, unscientific poll. But from what I'm seeing also, there was a value to that, to going over to dmoz.org and putting in my link there and going over to the Yahoo, whatever they used to call their directory thing, and putting my website in the directory of all web designers. That used to be valuable, but the spammers could do it. And it was very hard for them to keep up to date about what's a good site, what's a bad site. So those listing sites are not as valuable. I'm talking about that any particular spam site can use its software to link their site to your site without asking. And we would never know it until we set up the webmaster tools next week where it'll tell us who's linking to our site. So... Um, got a lot to think about, right? And we'll be talking about uh, some of these in more detail in just one moment, but we're talking about SEO, SEM, what's on your site, what's outside your site, paid versus non-paid, what and why you need SEO for. We've done these various kinds of searches and we're leaning toward this new one of long tail keyword strategy. I've got a handout for you that spells it out a little bit more, which I'll give it to you in just a moment, but any, any questions on some of these things so far. There's some more question about mm -hmm. your other calls to YouTube. Mm -hmm. Do you have a paper or something to respect for YouTube? No, on that one it's more of an a more of a hands-on lecture on how to do it because there's a lot of nuances and different people need no, to do different no things. Class, really, it's just on three. Yes, to my knowledge, I, I don't know if another instructor might do that. You might want to go to our catalog and search if there's any other YouTube classes. But because of our time limit, we don't have a day where we actually create the video. We have a day where we set up the account and optimize it and such, but we don't have a day to create the video. Okay. Do you have a, a list of things that you flag by search engine? A list of things what? That can get you flagged by search engine? Yeah, we're going to see all of that once we log into the search, en uh, the search engine webmaster tools. Um, okay, let me give you a new handout. Let me set it up here and then I'll 
remind you where our network folder is. All right, everyone. So I've, I've, here's a new handout for you. Uh, again, you can print this out a little bit later. Let me remind you uh, our network folder. Go to your desktop, so minimize all your windows. Go to the desktop and open up Computer window. Double click Computer. <clears throat> then you'll see a section of Network Location. You may have two, probably just one. Classroom Data, Drive Z. It's in Zebra. Double click Classroom Data, Drive Z. You'll see a bunch of folders, it's all alphabetical except for Zach, he cheated. Scroll down and then you'll see Campos SEO. Double click Campos SEO. If you came in a little bit late earlier, the syllabus is right there with my email and such. And then this handout. Drag a copy, don't just double click these. Drag a copy to your flash drive or desktop. Get a copy. Don't double click from my folder because it may lock it for someone else to view it. So drag a copy to your desktop or flash drive. And then when you've copied that over, close the network to let other people access it. And then we'll look at this new document that I gave you. It's Campus SEO 1, long tail strategy. I'm going to give other handouts with numbers, but there's that one. Did everyone get that file? Anyone need a little help getting it? Get a copy of that file, double click it so we can look at it. This will actually be also a hands on activity. You won't complete the whole thing together. I want you to look at this and uh, then start to apply it. I forgot to say this class uh, is not part of a certificate program. Therefore, there are no homework assignments, there are no grades, there's no certificate at the end. But hopefully, what you get out of it is something tangible in that your website gets better ranking. So this is not any activity that you're going to fill out and turn in. I won't give you a grade. If you want a grade A+, plus, great, you did great. <laughs> but what you get out of it are these concepts, and I can look at it in detail if you'd like. Uh, but it's not any sort of requirement. This is forming a long tail keyword strategy. Nowadays, search engines don't rank your site very well unless you have good content. It's not just about simple keywords anymore. You're not going to be found when people search for Italian restaurants you'll have a better chance for being found with authentic Italian food in Chula Vista. That's the long tail. If you understand your niche better, you'll be able to potentially rank better. In this activity, you'll define your long tail. So two things are happening in this assignment, or this activity. We are figuring out what are some keywords that we can use to get us ranked. What we're also doing is some competitor analysis. We're checking what are other websites that exist that are doing well, with the keywords that I want, that my business is about. We're seeing what's working for the competition, what I need to do or avoid, what they're doing but I need to do better, and what I'm up against. Maybe with that particular keyword I'll never get found. But this is keyword research and competitor analysis rolled into one. We've got two act activities, sub-activities, the old way, the new way. The old way is going to be the basic keywords, simple keywords. The new way is going to be the long tail, complete phrases. So the way we'll do this, if you'd like to do this, you can go to the Start menu, and we're going to pull up Microsoft Word. You can do this on plain old paper, but it's going to be easier digitally because we can copy and paste a little bit. So I would recommend go to your Start menu and start typing Word so that we get Word 2013. So start your Word app. If you don't have Word at home, you can obviously choose use any text editor. You can write this in Google Docs, <coughs> whatever, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull up Word. I'm just gonna choose the basic, simple, blank document. And I will select up on the file tab, save as. 
this again. This is not homework. You don't have to turn this. You don't even have to do this if you don't want. But I'm going to start us off a little bit here because this will hopefully get you to do something for real for your business better than a grade. And so I'm going to do save as, and I'll save it to my flash drive. I'll, I'll save a copy of this in the network folder a little bit later, like my other notes, if you want to copy. So in my case, I'm going to save it to the desktop, but I recommend your flash drive. Because remember, if you don't take this with you, Deep Freeze will erase it. But I'm going to save this as competitor analysis. analysis. And long tail. strategy. Any any name. You can put today's date. doesn't matter. Just save this file. What we will use this for is we're going to check on the competition, make some notes as per my handout, and start to develop keywords. These keywords, eventually then, we're going to apply them to our site. Because keywords are what people search for. Those phrases, those basic keywords, the long detailed ones, when I ask my phone, those are the keywords people are searching for. And I don't know what people are searching for. I have an idea and I have concepts of what my business is. Victor's Bakery. I want people to find me when they type cookies. Good luck. You have, you're in competition with Oreo and Nabisco and all of these. But if I'm searching for local organic San Diego bakeries, okay, I might have some edge over Oreo and the rest. But I wouldn't know that until I research. So in my handout, the first part. We're going to go to a search engine. Now, I would do this for Google and Bing if I have the time and the effort. Um, I would do this for Google and Bing, and I would search for a simple keyword. I wouldn't get too complex, just like I searched before, web design. Then I'm going to get a bunch of results on the first page. I want to make notes of the title and the description, and I'll show all of this in a moment. I want to make notes about the title and the description about for each real site, not the Yelp result not the TripAdvisor result, not the top 10 result. I want real results of a real company. And it may be on page 2 or 3. That's fine. I want to go find results of real companies. I then want to actually click on each company. Yes, I'm going to give them a little bit of free traffic. If they're my competitor, that's OK. I'll live with it. And I'm going to go to their site and kind of objectively as best as possible, subjectively also, kind of analyze their site. And I might not have the education of a web designer, but you know what they say about art. I don't know what's good, but I know what I like. So we're going to look at their site. We're going to see uh, what's good, what's bad about it. And I have some possible ideas to think about, such as when was it updated? Because again, that longevity and that authority relates to your updates and, and such. Do they have a blog? What's their design like? Do I like it? Hate it? Is it modern? Is it is it weird? Is the site mobile friendly? That's a big one. Is your site easily be easily viewable on a mobile device? We'll talk about that in a moment. What do you like? What don't you like? Again, you don't need an education in web design. You just need to see the competition, see what you like, what you don't. So I'll start off with Google. Again, I'm going to have this fictional business, Victor's Bakery. So a basic keyword. Let's just say I'm going to look for bakeries. Obviously, it's going to suggest things to me, but I'm going to ignore those for the moment. I want to see if people were searching for this keyword, bakeries, what would be the results. You can ignore these if you'd like, but remember these are valid results. I'm going to ignore those for the moment because I want to go down here to see, for example, twigs.org. They have a title and other items. So this is one legitimate result. I'm going to skip the Yelp over here, the top 10 list over there. I seem to have found a legitimate result, and sometimes you might not be able to tell. That's an example of a bad result, because they can't even explain what they do in the short amount of space of what, of what they're given here. So I found a result. I'm going to select this whole chunk of a result, right-click copy, and in Word, do you know this trick? If you right-click and select this option right here, it only keeps the text. The reason I would do that instead of simply doing a regular paste is because it also comes in with the colors and the link and all that distracting stuff. I just want the text. So if you right-click in Word and select from Paste Options the third one, which is Keep Text Only, 
that removes the distracting stuff. This activity here is a variation of what my company would do for a client. They, we talk, they hire us, and we now need to do competitor analysis. We need to analyze the client itself. We need to develop a strategy. So this is a variation of what we do for them, which of course we charge for, and we get a free version of it. We go in and check the competition for as many as you know we, we want to do. Here, I think in the activity I'm saying for three of them, just to have something. And so the results that we get from a Google or Bing search, the very first item that we hear that we get here is known as the meta title. So it's on the site title. It's the title of of the of the site. We can edit that of course. I'll show you how to do that later. But here's a title with some amount of word space that you can write. I can't tell you how many words or characters to write because it's different on Bing and Google. And Google a few years ago changed the size of their font. So that when I used to be able to write seven words, they made a bigger font. Now only five show up. So, may, so your meta title. I search for the keyword bakeries. The top result is Twig's Bakery. I'm just showing you here, you don't have to have the exact version of the word on your site. The search engines are getting smart enough to understand you're searched for bakeries, but here's the result of a bakery. Twigs Bakery, San Diego. They took that space in their title to have the keyword bakery. Actually, let me back up here. We should write before this result. Uh, basic keyword search bakeries. That's the term that I used to search a moment ago. Because I've got it in a Word document, I can put some cool, you know, styling and such for my oops, for my purposes. So I, the first activity, part of the activity that I'm doing is I'm searching for the keyword bakery. I'm thinking that's how people are going to find me, perhaps. So one result is Twigs Bakery. They have the word bakery in their title. In their address, they have nothing at all about bakeries or cooking or cookies or anything. As I said, not necessary anymore. They, they don't have twigsbakery.com. They don't have twigsbakerysandiego.com. They have twigs.org. The dom domain name doesn't really matter. This is domain name, or URL, or address, whatever you want to call it. Then we get this, which is the meta description. You can just short them as title description, technically meta description. Twigs is a boutique bakery specializing in cakes for all occasions. Weddings, birthdays, parties. We have two cafe coffee houses in the university, and then it seems to cut off. That has a limit also as well. You cannot write a whole soliloquy here to explain what your business is. You have a certain amount of characters, which differ on Bing and Google. <clears throat> and so if we know that we're going to get cut off at a certain point, we want to put the most important things as early as possible within our phrase right here. So they have the keyword bakery right there. And I'm seeing this, these are other keywords that perhaps are helping them get found. Wedding, coffee house, I don't know, as I do more analysis. Next line, let me see who else. Twig, San Diego Unit Tribune, TripAdvisor, San Diego, San Diego A-List, City Voter, Wikipedia, Carlos Bakery. Carlos's Bakery of Cake Boss. Okay, let me copy that. Remember, right-click in Word and then select your paste option text only. That'll give you cleaner, cleaner results.
So again, there's a title. If we have the keyword bakery, in the address, that one does have bakery in the title. Singular, I searched plural. Carlos Bakery. Notice it's not even that properly spelled. It's Carlos's Bakery. But here it seems that simply like Carlos Bakery, because you can't have apostrophes and such on a web address. Um, little tangent here on web addresses. Um, see if you can get a name uh, or a web address, a URL that is pronounceable. Mm -hmm. Not necessary, but you know, if you're also going to do ancillary marketing, you're going to be that is on social media marketing, but also in the real world. You're a radio ad or a, or a TV ad or a newspaper ad or word of mouth is is your business also pronounceable? Um, keep it as short as possible. The longer it is, the harder it is to remember, the harder it is to share, and the more it's starting to look like a spammer. Because the spammers are going to have a huge address. Carlos Original Bakery San Diego.com. Now it's getting spammy because they got Carlos's bakery taken before. Keep it as short as possible to look less spammy and have it easier to remember. Can use dashes to separate. I recommend avoid that. I don't I don't think there's any negativity to it. So what I'm saying is if you can't get Victor's bakery because it was taken, you might be able to still claim Victor's dash bakery. But the problem with that is when you're telling someone this address in the real world, are you going to say victors dash bakery.com and they're going to say okay D-A-S-H? Mm -hmm. You'll say, okay, Victor's hyphen bakery. How do you spell hyphen? Mm -hmm. And so, uh, I don't believe you can do underscores on the main address. You can do it in sub pages, but not in the main address. So again, the saying underscores. Okay, people might know what an underscore is. Um, but again, I would try to avoid it. Shouldn't ha it shouldn't hurt your SEO. Either of these that you do. But I'm also thinking in terms beyond your website and SEO and such. Um, think about yourself. If you were to see both of these, which of which these two would you see? Would you think is the most legitimate one? Because maybe the first one, maybe that one's, I don't know, maybe yeah. via bias, I think that might be the spammer, that might be the fake one. And there's no way around it. If I want Victor's Bakery, I have to do a dash. Well, I could possibly do Victor's Bakery SD. Again, are you going to get too long? Victor's Bakery San Diego? So the name, again, doesn't have to be a huge thing that you, that you beat yourself up about. This one had something that the other result didn't have. Now, you don't appreciate it here when I copied and pasted it, but I see it in the result. I'm seeing Carlos's Bakery, and then it says Carlos's Bake Shop right there, whereas Twigs doesn't have an extra little thing here. I hadn't seen this before, but now I see what it is, and, and it makes sense. This is their, this is their Wikipedia article. They're so big, they've got an article on Wikipedia. We probably don't have an article on Wikipedia, and if you haven't heard of Wikipedia, it's the global encyclopedia that anyone can contribute to. So in theory, you could make yourself an article on Wikipedia, but people on Wikipedia take it very seriously. And one of the tenets of Wikipedia is that there should be articles here of legitimate topics that matter to a lot of people. Never mind that there's topics in there about, you know, what are all the all the possible forms of kryptonite that can hurt Superman. Uh, here, someone might say, "Victor's Bakery? I've never heard of them," and they remove you from Wikipedia. It's a collaborative thing for good and for bad. And so, don't try really that hard to get yourself on Wikipedia. It's kind of a difficult endeavor. It's, it's like a dictionary or an encyclopedia. If you're in, in the encyclopedia, you're pretty legitimate. In theory, Wikipedia also. 
But I noticed for that particular example, they are on Wikipedia. So sometimes a Wikipedia entry. I don't see that too often. Then the description, Carlos's Bakery. Carlos Bakery, Carlos Bakery, home of the cake boss, Buddy Velastro, specializes in baking up the sweetest treats, wedding cakes, and custom cakes for any occasion. I'm seeing the keyword wedding twice already. I saw it on wedding for twigs, and they're number one. And cake boss is that big famous show on Food Network. They're number two. But they've got wedding, weddings wedding cakes as a keyword that I may make a note of that might help me rank let's see one more Portos Bakery same sort of thing I would copy that paste it, analyze what the result is Welcome to Porto's Bakery and Cafe, Porto's Bakery. Honestly, this one's not written very well. It's, it's, it's very wasteful. They have, yes, it sounds nice, but this is a waste. Welcome to. You don't need that. And then they have Porto's Bakery listed again, which they already have it listed there. That's not helping them. And it, notice they're number three in these results. There's obviously other sites that are ranked much lower, so other things might be compensating. But in this case, this particular title, Avoid superfluous words in your valuable site title. Fill that spot there with those keywords. They've got bakery and cafe, so that's good. Then they've got the name twice, that's not so good. And they got welcome. Again, that sounds nice, but who cares? The search engines don't, especially. Porto's Bakery, bakery in the title. But again, Twigs is number one without having to put the word in their address. They have a Wikipedia entry. And then Cuban style, family bakery, and cafe. So I see the word cafe. Do we see cafe? We saw cafe on Twigs. Cafe is another keyword that's appearing more than once with the top results. I'm not saying you, you put cafe if you're not a cafe. I'm just saying if it if it's if you do have that aspect of your business, why are you not using what's working for others? Includes list of product history and video of bakers at work. Interesting. Not really about being able to buy anything. History. Videos. Okay, that might be helping them because they've got videos. How to do this, how to do that. Baking tips. Videos. So you accumulate as many of those results as you would like. You can easily go to page two or three, it doesn't matter, but you want to accumulate real results. You then want to do the third part here where you actually are going to click on some of these businesses. And then you are going to see with some of these starting point examples answering these questions. This is of course all for you. Um, are you able to answer these questions? So I'm going to go to Twigs. I'm going to look around to see if I find any sort of um, copyright notice or last updated notice or something. I'm seeing some results. I see a copyright 2016, so it seems pretty new. I'm going to say here, uh, does it have a blog? So I'm going to look around. Oh, I see blog right there. Has it been updated very recently? It's October 2015, but they've got some articles, more pictures and text and keywords that people could search for. I think way too many pictures, but there's these keywords talking about weddings, birthdays, baby showers. People are searching for that. Local baby shower bakeries or something. So it's got that keyword that possibly helps them get found. It's a really good looking Louis Vuitton cake. 
So they're showing off they're showing off their work really well in detail. The quality of the pictures ranges. You know, this one's a little bit dark. This one's a little bit nicer up here. Some of these look a lot better. That one's a nice looking picture. So you're you're looking at the competition, you're swallowing your pride and you're seeing what's good about them. What's good about them that I haven't done. So making notes here for twigs, you know, as much writing as you want to do. But I would write uh, updated 2016 has a blog not updated since October 2015. Lots of good pictures. So you can try to write the good and the bad of what you're seeing about the competition. They're number one for a reason most likely. Is the design modern? Is the site mobile friendly? Uh, one way to test for mobile friendly websites is if you're in a web browser here, if you shrink the web browser window, and if you push it and pull it like that, and if it kind of like aligns itself nice and readable, it may be mobile friendly. This one is cutting off. The words are not going there nicely. This is not the only way to check that, however. Sometimes that fails. The best way to check if a site is mobile friendly is visit it on your mobile device. They may have some sort of um, setup where they it's maybe a responsive website or something. So just to kind of check here, I'll, I'll go to Twigs on my mobile. Twigs.org. No, even even here on a real mobile, it's not really it's not real really mobile friendly. You can really tell if it's mobile friendly or not is if the text is really small. If you have to you know zoom in to really read it, most likely it's not mobile friendly. So if your website, if it's really small on a mobile device and you've got to pinch or double tap to zoom in, it's probably not mobile friendly. This is one of the most important things for modern SEO. Let's write it down here. Not mobile friendly, which is optimized for mobile devices. In 2016, this is deadly. Now they're still number one for other reasons. That's so not. It doesn't seem mobile friendly. The text seems really, really small. Well, it's such a small way. Is that because I mean it's not mobile friendly? Yeah, that's what I just said. If your text. Yeah, the whole page is on here too, but I have to zoom in to actually read it. Yeah. So if you have to zoom in, That's most not. likely it's not mobile friendly. So here I'm saying that um, for other factors that seem to be negating it, this is not so bad for them. But if I'm just starting off and my site doesn't look very good on a mobile device, I have to, if I have to zoom in and such, it may not be mobile friendly. And now the search engines are really looking at that because more and more of us are using mobile devices to visit websites. I'm not in a computer looking it up. I'm on the road looking for that business. And if it doesn't look good on my mobile, I'm going to go elsewhere. So again, you can look at all of these. What do you like? What don't you like? I don't have a good web design. I don't have a web design experience, let's say. But if I look at it in general, well, you know, I kind of like the colors and such, but I don't like... I don't like this this slice of cake up there. It almost looks like a it almost looks like a um, tablecloth to me. It doesn't look like the side of a cake. So I would I would have liked it if that wasn't up there. I would have liked it if their logo was in the middle. So you're gonna try to see what's good, what's bad, and as we go into more detail throughout the course, we will see other tips and techniques and such. But here. Um, it's just up to you to decide what you like or don't about it. Yes? So the, the search engines that look up your business name and stuff, um, so is it just the keywords, but you're just looking for what their site looks like as we look at the business? No, the search engines look at that too. They look at, um, they look at uh, what's it called, uh, 
user experience. They look at that, they, they can test these things. Are these links too small? Is the text unreadable? Is there bad contrast? Is it broken links? The search engines look at that, analyze all of that, and also determine that, use that to determine your ranking. Because if I got these broken links, if I'm going to go look at custom cakes and it's broken link, why would the search engine rank you? It's a faulty site. It doesn't have all the content that it needs for the person that is searching. We're actually getting further in the day than I thought. So let me jump over here to the second part, the new way, the long tail. Here it's the same sort of idea, but I've got here, in a clean search engine, search for a long tail keyword. Search for a longer phrase. Now before I search, the footnote says, a clean search engine is one where you have reset your web browser. I recommend cleaning out all the cookies and browsing history before using the search engine. This will give you a more accurate result. Also, using private browsing is helpful. I recommend having a web browser just for these types of searches. This is important to get results like how your potential visitors or customers would. I get people coming to our class, to this class once in a while, and they say, you know, when I search my website, I do the long tail keyword search, and I get number one results. But when I search for myself on my friend's computer, I'm on number 20. Well. That's because, not that the search engine is lying, but the search engine, the web browser that is, is trying to help you if you're constantly searching for the same things over and over. It's building a history. As you visit websites over and over, it's building a history. Again, it's not spying on you. It's not trying to trick you. It's trying to help you. I visit these tech sites all the time. I want to get back to them quickly. So when the person searches for their keywords over and over on their own website, I mean on their own web browser, the browser will of course show that result over and over because that's what they want. And then when they search on their friend's laptop who they've never searched those keywords, they show a much more legitimate result. So what my note here is saying, you need to figure it out. I'm not going to go through it here because you might love to use Chrome, someone else loves Safari, someone else is on Internet Explorer, someone else is whatever. You need to figure out in your web browser somehow, where is the spot where I clear my cookies? Where is the spot where I delete my browsing history? Where is the spot where I clean it out to get the, le the results like a legitimate user? Now be careful because I say here, you're about to reset your browser like a brand new browser. And a lot of us use our browser, the same one over and over, to easily log into our email, to easily log into our bank, to easily log into all of these things. And if I'm telling you to clear things out, it's going to forget all of that. And you're going to have to log in again, and you don't remember because you have it automatically logging you in. So you can download another browser completely for free. All the browsers are there for free. And use the other browser just for these purposes. Figure out how in this browser that I, that I don't use regularly, figure out in the setting somewhere, how do I clean it out so that it doesn't matter that I've lost all of the history and settings and passwords. I want it like that to be a clean browser. Yes? Yeah, so like I'm saying right here, yes, it's good, but the private browsing incognito and all of that is good. But watch this. I was uh, I was doing some searching. I go into incognito mode and I start to search uh, authentic. It tell, it remembers that I had typed it authentic before. So just because I'm in private browsing doesn't mean it's forgetting my previous history. Private browsing or incognito is just saying anything you're doing from now on gets erased, but anything you did before is still in memory. So a better thing is on this browser this you know, the sacrificial browser, you're going to delete all the cookies, all your history, and go into private, into private mode. And now that has no history that can trip you up and no history that's going to be saved in the future. Would you do that Which browser are you in? I am in uh, Firefox. In Firefox, you can go up to the little icon on the top right corner, these three little lines, and you've got new private window. Yes. Now, if you go through all the different browsers and you or if you were to just clear it out, would your Google search results just be the same across the browsers, or are they going to be different? Unfortunately, unfortunately, they may still be a little bit different. Uh, you know, 
being cynical, even though they deny it, if I'm using the Google Chrome web browser on the Google search engine, it might give different results than the competitor web browser, Firefox Internet Explorer. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt and say no, but we can easily test that. So um, we, we can test many of these things. And the thing about SEO is we can get answers directly from the search engines, but some things are secret and hidden and proprietary trade secrets. Because when Bing implements some technique, Google will copy it, and vice versa. So we don't know every single thing that, the, that works on the search engine, but we can test many of these things. So figuring out how to clear my cookies, going into private mode, that's what the second activity would be here, where I go now and search for a long tail, a phrase, a longer sentence. So how is someone going to be more detailed? Let's say I'm searching over on, on Google. Instead of simply bakery, I'm going to search for um, you know, Chula Vista Bakery, uh, vegan um, recipes, affordable. You know, it doesn't have to be a, lit, a complete sentence, but now here I'm uh, focusing in on a little bit more detail. So I'm getting results from Pita, I'm getting results from Choose Veg, from Yelp, Foursquare. This one might be a little bit harder to get a real result. Momtastic, HappyCow.net, vegan and vegetarian restaurants in San Diego. It's saying restaurants rather than bakeries. Maybe I'm the only vegan bakery in San Diego. That might be, that might mean, or in Chula Vista, that might mean that I have very little competition. Everyone else is either a full restaurant or every other result is like some sort of top 10 list. HealyEatsReal.com, paleo recipes, vegan and paleo, updated April 20th. They're the last result, but they're the most accurate result of mine. It's got those keywords, it's in more detail, it does seem to be more variety. That might be telling me either there's no competition, which is great, uh, or there's no competition because it doesn't work for them. This would be the second search over on my Word doc. I would do let's see, page two, long tail. Now I'm doing a search with Chula Vista Bakery Vegan Recipes Affordable. And I get a result. Analyze this, make notes again. It's recent. There is the double, the two sides of the coin that longevity is important, but what have you done for me recently? So the longer your website exists is good, but have you updated it? And that's not simply changing your graphic on your home page, and that's not, you know, changing your about page. That's creating content like blogging on a regular basis. Pretty recently, a new article was seems to have been uploaded to the site. The search engine is going to value that too. Two websites that are five years old, well, which is the one that's most recent, newer, the newer stuff that people would care about. This one that was updated in April, that one that was updated in 2014. And I would also click to read about the site and try to see what's it's good and bad about it. Pretty good design. Nice big pictures, clean. There's a subscription screen. Again, we will have an activity where we can talk more uh, professionally about a, a website and such when we do the analysis. If people want to um, volunteer their website, I'll, I'll go in in more detail. But here, perhaps a little less educated, which is fine you look at the competition and try to use your language to see what's good or bad. And I have examples in the handout to kind of guide you. Does it have social media? Mine doesn't. Theirs does. That could be a reason I'm not ranking. Do you have contact info? Mine doesn't. Theirs does. Does it have features your site doesn't? What would you do differently? 
All of this is competitor analysis, checking the competition to see who's there. How hard is it going to be to, to crack that top 10? Maybe I'm going to stay around that 8, which is still first page. But based on what I wrote there, someone is going to click me instead of someone else. Someone is going to have the keywords that someone searched for. After I do this competitor analysis, and then I start to figure out some basic keywords, 10 of them or so, and then five complete phrases, the long tail, and then we'll see later. Okay, I've got this list of keywords. How do I use them? Where do I put them? We'll get to that later. But this activity here is to kind of lay a foundation. I'm getting close to the end of the day, but let me draw you a little picture here. It's going to be a simple. It's going to be a simple x and y chart or graph. I'm going to have on the vertical. I'm going to have frequency. So vertically, we've got frequency. And then horizontally, we've got keyword. And the way this looks, this also gives me an excuse to use our $1,000 monitor. Uh, maybe not. Okay. It's worked before. So this is this kind of this kind of um, graph here decreasing. Okay, what's happening here is this is the possibilities of keywords. I have one keyword here, like bakery, that is used a lot by a lot of websites. The frequency of that keyword is very high meaning I'm a needle in a haystack. I can't get found easily because a lot of people are using bakery. I'm on page 40. So some keyword used a lot. As we go further down here, this is, you know, San Diego vegan bakery. There's less competition here. Still competition, but less competition if I'm simply bakery. Further down here, affordable San Diego vegan bakeries with free recipes. Down here, even less people have used those keywords, their frequency is lower, that means I have less competition. There could be a point where it's diminishing returns and it's too specific, no competition at all, but then no one's finding me because no one's thinking to search for that. So there is some sweet spot somewhere, and ignore this bump, just it's all smooth. There's some point where I don't have a lot of competition, but I have keywords that people are looking for. I'm not a needle in a haystack. Maybe I'm, however, a bigger needle in a smaller haystack. But uh, this is the concept of the long tail keyword strategy. I'll put this picture in the folder as well a little later. Um, that's the long tail keyword strategy. That's That's the long tail over here. What's the part that tails off or tapers off where you can have relevancy and be found compared to everyone else that is trying to do this over here, the old style of SEO? And there's still plenty of tutorials out there and SEO companies that will try to sell you on this about these keywords and such. And it's a lot less common, but one tactic that an SEO company might do, a not very good one, black hat or gray hat, would be that you, you hire them to do SEO for you and you see results really quick. But what they're doing is they're spending the money that they've charged you to do these ads and to do this PPC, this paid stuff. And yes, you're getting great results and it works for a little while, then your contract is up and then you start to look, rank 
lower again, you say, well, these guys work for me, let me hire them for a longer contract. And they keep doing those techniques that are not building a good foundation, which was what this class is, building a foundation. So you may take these three-week classes, you may take the four-week version or the five-week version, you may learn all of these things, which again are complicated but not difficult, and you may decide, I'd rather spend my time and effort on running my company and I'll hire someone to do it perfectly fine, but hopefully you get the jargon and the terminology to see who's legitimate and who's not and who's doing it the old way, who's doing it the modern way. Because no company, no legitimate SEO company should sell you by telling you, you're going to rank number one in a month. You're going to rank number one in two weeks. You're going to rank number one in nine months. No real company should be giving you a timetable of success. As we're seeing through this keyword research and competitor analysis, it could be very difficult. They don't know. They shouldn't know and tell you that early on you're going to rank within X amount of time. Because they may be using black hat techniques, gray hat techniques. They may be using PPC, which is not black hat or gray hat, but just a different technique. And what we're doing is the long tail, the white hat, the, the long way, the difficult way, the complicated way. But we're building up something legitimate for the future. Because once that budget runs out, you're going to see your ranking starts to plummet. This way, you're going to see it rise, perhaps slowly, but it's building upon itself. Final questions, because they technically stopped paying me four minutes ago. <laughs> so you don't know exactly where... So you're going to have a feel for it when you start looking at the sites, like there's a whole, a whole bunch at the top. You don't want to be there. You want to be somewhere in between, because you want the, those keywords to just go to your site. Yes, and it is going to make sense as, as you do it, but it, yeah, you're going to be kind of focusing more over here rather than in the first part of it, because at a certain point you're you're too uh, you're too much competition and at a certain point no competition yeah, no, no one's, really think it was worth no one's thinking. so somewhere you know it's not marked off in exact detail but that's the concept somewhere and I'm figuring that out by this activity where I'm checking the competition I'm seeing these keywords I'm thinking of new keywords I'm testing them this is one of the ways to test how what are these keywords do they work actually plug them into the search engine and check them out. Later on when we look at the webmaster tools we can do keyword research in another way. That'll be next week. That'll be when we set up our webmaster tools. Um, if you have your website information, bring it because it will connect the websites to the search engine. If you don't have a website, that's fine. We can still create the webmaster tools, use those tools, but it works best with a website. So as we wrap up the class, let me put in all my notes that I wrote so far today if you'd like them into the network folder. I'm going to remind you to get a copy of that syllabus. I'll turn the printer on in a moment. If you'd like a copy of these lecture videos, send me an email and I'll send you those videos. Remember they're not edited, they're uncut. If I make mistakes it's all there, but you can watch them anytime that you want. And um, that's it for the moment. Thank you for coming. Next week we'll do it again. Um, 6 p.m.